when you have this traffic jam in the brainstem, you're going to have a really difficult time using everyday sensations to what? Form accurate perceptions. So perception is going to be somewhat distorted. You're going to have a difficult time using sensations to behave in ways that people call socially appropriate. Okay, behavior has to be impacted. And of course, if you're seeing the world as in a way that is not integrated and not organized, you're going to have a hard time using sensation to learn efficiently. So this is really important in terms of how do we support our kids in thriving and feeling empowered in their in play, in their social and emotional relationships in their school life. Another thing you'll read about if, if you start reading about sensory integration is the term sensory modulation. In order to have good sensory integration, I need to be able to modulate sensation. Sensory modulation is about my filters. It's really about the volume controls, about what I pay attention to and what I ignore. So you have these, it's, it's kind of like you have these volume controls in your nervous system, in the brainstem, and, you, and a sensation comes along and you say, turn, this vol turn the volume up. This is important. This is relevant. This is meaningful for my survival. Turn the volume up, or as Jean Ayres would say, enhance that sensation. Alternatively, something else may come along and you may say, turn the volume down. Inhibit this sensation, as Jean Ayres would say. Turn the volume down. This is not relevant. This is not meaningful to me. This is not important for my survival. Or in some cases, we turn the volume off altogether. So, for example, the hair on the back of my head, it's light, moving touch. I feel it every day. Um, it's normal. My brain has habituated to that sensation. It doesn't register it as a threat. It needs energy to pay attention to other things. So what does it do? It turns the volume down or, because it's so habitual, it turns the volume off altogether. However, the light moving touch of a spider crawling up my arm, alert, 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 enhance this sensation. Turn the volume up. This is important. This is relevant. Pay attention. And so sensory modulation is all about these volume controls. I could be really naughty right now and talk about something that you're not even registering. And for example, maybe I could bring up your underwear and the alignment of your underwear right now. <laughs> but just, just me saying that, here's what I know now. Make sure you zoom in on their faces here. <laughs> I know that there is about 80% of you out there that is dying to just get in there and rearrange. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn around. <laughs> I'm going to give you a moment. Do your thing. Go ahead. You, you right? Okay. So, <laughs> good. yeah, Michael's fixed his bra strap. So do you see that process, though? It's kind of like it's teachers at school. One person talks about head lice. <laughs> Everyone's scratching. That process is sensory modulation. It's all about, we, we couldn't possibly take in all sensation that we're receiving. There's so much going on in this room that we're not even aware of right now. That we could, we'd be exhausted if we took it all in. All right? Because remember, we don't receive the world like a tape recorder. We don't take in the world like a tape recorder. If we... Um, for example, what's your name? I told you I was going to pick on you. Ros Roslyn? All right. So can we have a mic person here? Gonna, I think you look beautiful today, Roslyn. You'll be great for the camera. Uh, so Roslyn is an expert on golden retrievers, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I say to Roslyn, Roslyn, put up right close to your mouth. Roslyn, I, I have two golden retrievers. I'd like to use them in therapy. Could you come out to a restaurant with me so I could pick your brains and your expertise? And you say... Of course. Of course, because 
You know this is just pretend, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The girl in the last workshop was scared to commit. So, I just want to make sure. So, we go to the restaurant. Now, it's a very noisy restaurant, isn't it? It's, 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 there's, there's lots happening. It's one of those really loud restaurants. But I am so captured by Roslyn and what she's sharing with me about Golden Retrievers. And so where, even though the, the restaurant is really noisy, where is my auditory Zoom? I'm Roslyn. Well, that's not exactly true because often in a restaurant there's like, say for example, there was this couple and they were having a big marital dispute behind me. And, um, you know, because I, can we tape your conversation by the way? Sure. She said yes, so we've got it on tape. So I'm like faking that I'm listening to Roslyn, <laughs> but my auditory Zoom, because I love, I guess I'm such a drama queen, is actually on the people behind me. You know, when we were first married, you used to go to craft fairs and do things with me, and now you just sit on your fat beep and watch Foxtel and. I wish we'd ever got that large screen TV. <laughs> and so I'm like totally there, right? That's where I am. And I'm thinking, you know, but do you see that how this selective kind of tuning and zooming in and out? You're not hurt by that, are you? No, because no, I've got it on tape and I can listen at home. So that's uh, modulation. So thank you, Russell. So when I get home, what kinds of things, this is something I want to ask you now. So. What kinds of things, and when I play back that tape recorder, because remember the tape recorder takes in the world as it is, right? What kinds of things am I going to hear on the tape recorder? Cutlery and, and crockery. Cutlery, crockery, yep. What other things? Conversations. Conversations, yeah, I'm going to hear cutlery, noise, doors banging, trucks going by. You guys are a shy bunch. Is it the cameras? <laughs> Okay, you know, you're going to hear people calling out to waiters. You're going to have, hear people having conversations. You're going to hear this whole mishmash of sound. Because why? Because a tape recorder does not filter. A tape recorder does not modulate sensation. It takes in the world as it is. Can... Can you just imagine if you lived in a little nervous system that took in the world like the tape recorder? Can you imagine how tiring that would be? It would be sort of like being in the Mall of America 24-7. You know, the Christmas shopping kind of feeling where your senses are just overloaded? This is what some of our kids go through on a day-to-day -day basis. 